so I'm not using this headphone. Give me another watch. I'm going to the US. I don't trust you that coming from the US. I'll move it. I haven't went outside. They come with stuff. Welcome inside the locker room. Smooth 98.1. Love music, love life. I am Myro Essay here. And of course, uh, the locker room 981 is not complete without the one and only Tega Supreme. Hello, Tega. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you today? Feeling abandoned. Why? You abandoned me. Oh. <laughs> and you came back without gifts. I'm, I, you know, I owe you. I got you. Plus, I got you. For apologies. First. I got you. First of all, <laughs> happy birthday, Narias. I don't care how long ago it was. Oh, it's still my me, birthday today. Yes, December, this is yeah. my first time here since your birthday. So happy birthday, Madam Tega. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. All right, so if you'd like to join the conversation this morning, we'd love for you to do so. All you need to do is to send us a WhatsApp message on 0809-444-0981 or tweet at us at smooth981fm and use the hashtag lockerroom981. All right, so let's kick off. NPFL to kick off December 27, according to Sports Minister. The Nigerian Fo Professional Football League is set to start on December 27. Youth and Sports Minister Sunday Dari confirmed on Friday while briefing journalists at the National Stadium Surulere in Lagos, in Lagos sorry, that the NPFL will restart on December 27. Here are his exact words. Part of the problem of not starting the league outside the COVID-19 pandemic is from them, the organizers. We've been waiting for them. We are meeting with the NFF and the and MPFL to sort things out. What is most important is that we must do the right things. We must know the number of teams who are already who are ready and have fulfilled the necessary regulations to start. We'll start with whatever number of teams who have done the right things. December 27 is sacrosanct. The league will start on that day he emphasized and and here is the problem with the sports minister <laughs> you know sometimes when he, I, I mean have you heard your sports minister speak very different from the past ministers we've had um for sports sounds very articulate until he starts until he starts listening to what he's articulate about <laughs> and that's why you know that he has no business talking about this what is he this football minister or the sports minister when is the basketball league starting when is tennis starting? Mm -hmm. When are we starting athletics? Why must he only know about MPFL? And why is it sacrosanct that it must start December 27th? Does he know that there's a second wave of COVID? Has he ensured that everybody has tested, has taken the test? What are the things that he's putting in place? Saying, okay, if if the some clubs have registered, then they would they would start like that. So if six clubs register, six clubs will start the league. Uh, uh minister <laughs> this is why you should focus on what you are supposed to do your job is to liaise with the nff and the npfl find out what they need to do policy wise or state wise so basically if the country says um there is a lockdown find out how you can work that out with them playing the league um your business is not to determine when they start the league as much as the english premier league brings money to england they had to discuss with the the state had to discuss with the fa and the fa is the one that came to announce to us that okay this is when we're going to start the league and these are the things we're putting in place in fact that's all they had to go and tell the state and the state said okay you can start the league when you say you will start the league mm -hmm. it's not that this minister will just sit down and decide that you know what these people have not played football in a while you know what you must start december 27th <laughs> it is sacrosanct i think when they use that word sacrosanct they think it's, it's casting so yes <laughs> <laughs> so dear sports minister please don't be doing this kind of thing i don't know who your advisors are but let me be your friend today and tell you this is not your job and this is not the way to go about it shots fired shots received tiger and son charlie <laughs> finished five shots back in orlando tiger woods uh, has enjoyed a dominant golfing career but added a new memory after he and 11 year old son charlie finished five shots back of world number three justin thomas and his father during an exhibition event in orlando friday 
Florida, sorry, on Sunday. Team Woods placed seventh among a 20-team field of major champions and winners of the players alongside a family member for the two-day PNC Championship at the Ritz-Carlton Golf Club. I don't think words can describe it, Woods said. Just the fact that we're able to have this experience together, Charlie and I, it's memories for a lifetime. We're saying okay, it's you. I'm tell, so you, can, you know that this is this is golf. You can hear what they're playing it, Ritz Carlton. You can hear all the money that is called. It's golf. Yeah, Ritz Carlton. <laughs> yeah. 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 golf. But um, the reason why I chose this story is 11 year old Charlie had some mega shot. He shot an eagle on Saturday. Um, I was looking at this 11 year old boy. Like he's the youngest ever at, at this tournament, and wow. was the youngest at this particular at this wow. weekend's tournament. So it's it's a golfer and a family member. Um, Justin Thomas played with his father. Some people played with their brothers, but both, basically, um, one major golfer and a family member. So Charlie comes on, and we are beginning to see that maybe Tiger Woods, well, maybe Woods has not left us or left golf completely. Mm. There may be another wood because he was be- making birdies and eagles and it was the most beautiful thing ever and he's just 11. Mm-hmm. um here the thing is when you are the son of tiger woods it's just like being the son of Diego and maradona the pressure is already too much so sometimes it's better you can't do another job <laughs> than try to walk in your father's shoes because there's too much pressure. I mean, think about Michael Schumacher. His son, um, Mick Schumacher, was F2 champion in 2020. And it's such a big deal that he is going to sit in a Formula One car. Then they did testing in Abu Dhabi. And really, you don't really hear the results from testing. You hear about the constructors that, oh, this car is struggling and that car is struggling. But it did testing and the report was, Mick Schumacher is struggling in an F1 car. <laughs> Think about it. You are Michael Schumacher's son. son yeah. Seven time world champion. Legend Michael Schumacher. I am struggling in an F1 car. What do you mean? If I say fish is struggling, what's that? My friend. <laughs> so there's already so much pressure. Uh, yeah, and, there is. And, and that is the problem with this when these sons come. But I mean, Charlie, Charlie blew my mind this weekend. And I was just watching video of his shots. Um, his shot making, sorry, and it was it was beautiful to see. But sometimes when you just, you know when your father has dropped a heavy gauntlet like this, it's, ah. it's a very hard act. Sometimes it's to follow. Yeah, very tough act to follow. I mean, I've seen footballers' sons try to 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 do the same thing, and and there is a struggle. Um, but imagine that your father is the you know, it's one thing to be a, uh, just a, just a, another guy. Uh, you're just right, another you're guy. Right, actually. But when your father is the guy, like Michael <laughs> Schumacher was the guy, and then Mick Schumacher is struggling, and I forgot what are you talking about? <laughs> Do something else. My friend, you know, look up entry. Did you talk about um, Kai Rooney um, being signed on? Yes. Oh, so I no, I, I, I didn't I didn't speak about him. He's still lower leagues, but yeah. Hey. Let's wait till he gets up because even <laughs> David Beckham, one of the Beckham sons I know, yeah. and then all of them drop football. All of them. They didn't even. They didn't even try. They didn't even help. They took their mother's jeans. They, one of them is a fashion person. Yeah, yeah. One of them is a photographer. Yeah. They, they did not even bother. They didn't hunt it down. They didn't. They're like that. That's it. That's your personal legacy. We are busy. You know. So let's wait till he turns eight. Well, maybe seventeen, yeah. and he's playing at an England tournament or yeah. something. Then you know that okay, maybe the career is beginning to set. Yeah. Those are the. Yeah, but this genius stage it's is still, okay. it's still, early. It's still warming up. The pressure is just too much. It is. That's, that's the problem. Oh gosh, it is. You're judged not just on your own. You're you, standing you know, on the shoulders of giants, <laughs> and you have to start from there. Think about it. I mean, so so I think it's Pat. Is it Patrick Clavert's son now? Um, uh, somebody has a son playing now. I think it's Justin. And when his father does, when he does something, he's like, how oh, your father used to score. <laughs> he's like, your dad's son, Callum. He wasn't anywhere close Okay, there. think about Keza now. So Keza is playing for Juventus. And Ke- Keza is a fantastic footballer, but he doesn't score as many goals as his father. Oh, Do you know that Mancini, who played with his father, called his father one day and said, you have to teach your son how to score. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, 
Why? How? Just go, if you're not great, just go to another. If you're just okay, just do something else, please, so that you won't go and kill yourself. But you know when they're doing that, you it's know, so much pressure. It's, it's so much pressure. When yeah. you're when you're the son, yeah, you know, random people, yeah. If Frank Lampard has a son tomorrow, nobody will really yeah. judge him. Like Frank Lampard's father wasn't great, yeah, but no, he wasn't a great footballer. He was uh, an average footballer. You know, if Jordan Henderson has a son tomorrow, and it's not, not no. But when you're Messi's son ah, or oh, Cristiano Ronaldo's son, oh, Maradona oh, son. Maradona, Maradona, what are you doing? <laughs> you have to be the guy. <laughs> All right, so petulant uh, Mourinho denies Leicester plaudits for Spurs win. Tottenham manager Jose Mourinho belittled Leicester City's sterling display in a 2 0 win over his side on Sunday, three days after claiming the best team lost in a 2 1 stoppage time defeat at Liverpool. I didn't think either team played very, very well, he said. It's a game where your goalkeeper doesn't make a single save, but it's a game that we didn't play very well. We deserve to win the game at Liverpool, and that would have made it an amazing week because nobody has done that for a long time. The team was phenomenal at Liverpool. Now, if you look at the table, everybody's there. Who yeah. Is this man? Okay, so uh, <laughs> let me see. This is why I like to listen to Jose Moreno. Um, and you know what? He has some points. Or maybe it's because he's the one saying it or it's the way he says it. You know, there's a way he, his nose goes up when he's saying they didn't really play very well. But what Brendan Rogers pulled was a Moreno masterclass. The difference was that it worked. Mm. Um, Moreno would have, if Moreno had come away with the results at Anfield, they would have said, oh, that was a brilliant masterclass by Moreno. But he considered considered an 89th minute goal um, from Robert Firmino. So it now became about just the stats. Yeah. It's the same thing Brenda Rogers pulled um, yesterday. That was a typical Moreno masterclass. They had, the few chances they had always looked like goals. Tottenham had the ball, but he didn't really, at no time did it feel like, you know, Leicester were really threatened or under the knife. But wherever Leicester had the ball, it was cutting edge. And 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 when they didn't have the ball, their sh- defensive shape, their setup made it hard for you to break them down. So typically, what Brenda Rogers did, he pulled a Mourinho on Jose Mourinho. Like, take it. <laughs> <laughs> this is your turn. This is what you do to other people. Um, and, and, and it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Um, they considered they considered a a ridiculous penalty. I've always said Serge Ori. Um, his brilliance, he, he can be absolutely brilliant in one moment and absolutely foolish in the next moment it's it's back to back it comes on the same plates it's is two different sides of one coin mm. um he had the, the the guy was not even going towards goal fofana was running away from was facing away from goal in order for fofana to for that ball to be dangerous for for leicester city fofana would have had to turn around and then look for somebody to pass the ball to. Or he would have passed the ball back. I don't know what's got into Serge Ori. On the stroke of halftime, he pushed the guy in the 18-yard box. Just some things that, you know, like there's a remote control just pressing you to do something silly. <laughs> Press spoil. And, and that's what he did. So they gave away a civil, silly penalty. And then the second was an own goal of other words. So when you look at it, the, the, the details of, of the situation, you say, okay, maybe Tottenham are lucky. But because they didn't even really threaten um the leicester city goal like yeah. the, with, with the number of possession uh, the amount of possession they had they weren't dominant um creating chances or maybe even getting some one-on-one chances then that's where the problem was so Jose Marino, don't cry too much this guy did what he used to do to other people exactly so, you know, uh, so take it easy i know you have dropped to from first to sixth on the table and it may be painful ah no it's painful but you still have christmas day to so try and start building up again right? painful don't who cry says too much. that <laughs> if has uh, take a, has Mourinho written any book i'd like to read it or them if he has the guy Sabian. the guy can almost convince you that an apple <laughs> is an orange i have to you know you have to there's something there Mourinho is just some he's a delight beyond football itself Mourinho is a delight He's an entertainment he delight. Is. I don't know what you're talking about. He is. The best guy for the job. He is. <laughs> All right, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we have some more sporting stories for you. It is the Local Room 981 here on Smooth 98.1. Stay tuned. 98.1. So did you know that last week... Okay, take it out. You need to conform to my camera, please. They don't need to see my face. They need to see your face. What do you mean? Hey, no, I can see your face now. So why are you running away? Did you see my face last week or the week before? No. Please, if you want to see Tega's face, can you kindly comment? Please let that be your face. If you want to see Tega's face, Mm -hmm. come with some flowers (laughs) and some perfumes (laughs) and some pairs of shoes to Smooth FM. My face will be your face. 
Tega, stay there. Move. But don't move away from here. If you want to see my face otherwise, don't move be away strong. from here. Don't move away from here. Sounds like a proper sugar daddy. Hey, what's it? The girl got upsetting. I don't want you to go. I'll call you. Mm. So why is it possible I'm going? So when you're walking, you stop walking, you just be on. <laughs> I will tell you what cavities are in two minutes. Come and have some chocolate first. Let's start doing things. I really want to sleep. These days, sleep. Uh, anyway, I've always liked sleep. Well, this day, sleep is part two. I can't believe you like sleep. You, are, you ah, feel like you never sleep. I love sleep. My sleep is a, my hobby. Sleeping is my hobby. You is your life. Sports is your hobby. I like. <laughs> Sleeping is my hobby. <laughs> I like to sleep. It's just I don't like to sleep at night because I think that's when most things happen on TV. And then I pay for it in the morning. And the older I get, the harder I get. So stay away. Such an agbaya. My eyes screaming now. Okay, so we are the messages. We are back home. It is a smooth breakfast show, smooth 98.1, love music, love life, and beyond that, it is the locker room, 981. This is where we bring you all the spotting stories that are worthy of headlines. And uh, to do this justice, we have Tega Supreme. Hi, Tega, I guess. <laughs> okay, so we start with the comments, and this is how you can send in your comments. Simply go onto our WhatsApp platform, 08. 09444-0981 and let us know your thoughts and you can also do so on our twitter handle at smooth981fm use the hashtag locker room 981 or you could go on right now to youtube we're, we're streaming live on youtube take guys there looking good and happy and joyful and jovial <laughs> you can go on to um, youtube smooth 981 fm lagos and then uh, there's a comment chat box to send in your comments there so mosh from omole says compliments of the season take and ayo in your honest opinion what is really happening to arsenal how did Mikel teta go from a genius beating man city chelsea wolves and so on to a crust and vibes coach his cluelessness is appalling there's <laughs> much TV. Thank God I was not here when they were doing their funny business. We're going to the Arsenal story next. And Mecca from Amo says, Good morning. Please, no need bantering Arsenal this morning as losing has now become the new normal. 
<laughs> the spiritual problem in that club must be cast out by fire by force. Mikel Ateta even looks like someone who hasn't shaved for one month. If you let Mikel, <laughs> would you shave? shave? <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, some people still came to look for me on Twitter just to just to banter us. No, I said they should. I'm not at home, please. <laughs> no, man, I'm not supporting Tottenham. <laughs> Mourinho. <laughs> All right, so Arsenal goalkeeper Bernard Leno says uh, that there is no time for the players to feel sorry for themselves. At an eighth Premier League defeat of the season, ramped up the pressure on manager Ateta. He said, a lot of things are going wrong for us, but we don't have time to feel sorry for ourselves. We have to fight for every ball for our teammates. Now, the confidence is not at the top level, but the only thing that can be said is we should stick together and come out of this situation. Have you heard? I like, I like the way he says the confidence is not at the top level. <laughs> and it's true. It's, it's the way they make mistakes. <laughs> um, think about the way they concede goals. I, I look. I don't like. I said the buck always stops at the coach's desk, yeah. at the manager's desk. But I don't know what manager would tell Rob Holding that if you are defending your against your goalposts, like if you're defending, I said if an opponent is running at you, you are not supposed to be backing him. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to be looking at him so you close down the spaces in between the both of you. You are supposed to be watching the opponent. You are not supposed to be backing the opponent. I don't understand mm -hmm. who will teach players not to put do have reckless tackles to collect red cards. I don't understand who will teach William to score more than two goals in a season. In fact, for Arsenal, he has not scored. So let's not even start counting one. You know, th there's there's just there's just so much problems. Um, it's a combination of player and coach problems. So you, if you solve one without solving the other, you still need to revisit it. Because there was a time that Ateta was doing fine. When he was winning the FA Cup, I didn't hear all these things. People were saying, brilliant, genius, hey, huh? Then he's not winning FA Cup again. He's now 15th on the table, just four points from relegation zone. Oh, and people are, are blaming only, at, yes, just four points above. So Arsenal and Sheffield United will be hustling position. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, Arsenal fans, but that's that's your reality no, now. Speak the truth. That, that's your reality. Yeah, for, I I don't I don't even know how to say it. And this the fixtures are not getting any kinder. Arsenal face Chelsea on Boxing Day. Why would Arsenal be facing Chelsea on Boxing Day? Why can't they face Sheffield or Fulham? We're going to win. I'm coming back stronger. So, well, but but you know, like as I said, that sometimes it's the tougher fixtures that bring out the best in Arsenal. So I'm waiting to see. Everton was a tough fixture, and I thought that Arsenal would turn up um in that fixture. They didn't. Um, so now it's Chelsea. So from one blue to the other blue, uh, let's see how it pans out for them. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look kind to them. Um, they have to get their acts back together. They're sweating on Abomeyang's um fitness now. They said they had a calf problem, which is why, no way. which is why he missed um the last game. But even Abomeyang, how many goals? Have, if Zuma of Chelsea, that defender, has scored more goals than Abomeyang this season. So let's. You what know, that's what I'm saying. The problems are too many to solve at once. Okay, so so okay. what you need is a Christmas prayer. <laughs> so it's then, a prayer and fasting. Christmas miracle. <laughs> so so okay. So if they have a myriad of problems, which do you think they should sort out first? The one that I would have said they should sort out first is it's not sort how it's not sort out table. <laughs> if that's what you want, <laughs> they can sort it out now. <laughs> Thing, they need to ship out some players. In fact, they need to have never bought some players. Like who? For me, the first player they should never have bought, William. I can't <laughs> understand it. I, I don't know what it is. And Mikel Ateta always picks William. Maybe me, William has Mikel Ateta's mute. But <laughs> let's, let's go no. to the next story. <laughs> okay, so Ferry has sent us a picture that he thinks Arsenal players need right now. I will not rile them up a bit more. Chimobi Victor says, Mikel Ateta should be sacked immediately. They don't need any permission from Locker Room 981 to sack him because I am tired of him. While for Manchester United, they did the needful against Leeds United. Biggie from Ketu says, Mourinho is the ambassador of Pride and Proud. I agree. A Pride and Proud Foundation, the same way he humbled Arsenal with 2-0, Leicester City returned the favour. I said I was looking like, the, looking like the man for the job when the season started. Now he looks like you're about to lose your <laughs> Arsenal play against Man City on Tuesday. Are you, are you still an Arsenal supporter? Oh, okay, that, okay. so they, they play against Man City in a different tournament. So oh, in right. the okay. EFL Cup, that's different. Uh, then, then, yeah, in the EFL Cup, they play against Man City. Oh, they I'm, perform, I'm just, they I'm perform just, better in other cups. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're cup 
competition team. Let's wait and see. <laughs> I was talking about the Premier League. They face they face Chelsea in the Premier League yeah. on Boxing Day. But the AFL Cup, yes, they face Man City on oh Tuesday. Oh gosh, Man City and then Chelsea. Oh my day. <laughs> this is Shay. I Arsenal. Don't say my Arsenal look. Please, I told you people Tottenham. Your Arsenal is terrible and shambolic. Even Worry Wolves will beat Arsenal as of today. But when Arsenal play Chelsea, they become unnecessarily strong. The worst is that Arsenal will even lose virtually on Zoom. <laughs> Tega, please message Lampard on your WhatsApp group. He shouldn't lose tonight. All right, let's go back to some co- to some stories. You guys are just full of it. Full of it. Don't let the Arsenal fans come for you. The Arsenal, f- we Tottenham fans. You know, <laughs> the way you switch. Benzema, Karim Benzema was described as phenomenal after scoring the opening goal and creating two others as Real Madrid won 3-1 at Eibar on Sunday to move level on points with City rivals Atletico at the top of La Liga. Yes, um, brilliant. I, w- I would say brilliant and lucky at the same time. Because um, at some point, it looked like Eibar was going to come back into that game and and leave um, a- 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 and stay at home with their 2 2 all draw. Um, one minute, Sergio Ramos was making a life-saving stop. The next minute... Eber was conceding on the other end. So the scoreline really doesn't tell the story. Mm. Eber really, after the two goals, Eber suddenly just realized that they were playing a football match and they started playing. Um, they scored an, the, the first goal, uh, a coiler around six foot six Cotua. That's to show you how well the ball was bent around the goalkeeper. Um, and they looked like they were going to, to get um, other, uh, a second goal. Unfortunately, it didn't happen for them. And, and after them, Sergio Ramos saved that chance. Uh, Vasquez scored on the other end, 3-1. Real Madrid had done the job. They are now top of the table um, with Atletico Madrid, even if I think Atletico Madrid has played two games less, mm-hmm. um, which is why they are there. Because ideally in Spain, it's head-to-head that counts, and on head-to-head, Real Madrid is ahead. But I think because of the two games in hand that Atletico Madrid have, um, they are still sitting pretty on top of the table. Barcelona, on the other hand, their problems have really not gone away. <laughs> So they drew again on Saturday against Valencia. Um, but they are a little close to the top now. They are fifth on the table. Okay. Not too far, like they were ninth and tenth before. <laughs> I was with the bottom people. Now they are, they are getting closer to the top. So that's, that's it uh, for the La Liga. It's looking like it's going to be in Madrid. Um, the, the trophy is going to be in Madrid, Madrid. Shah. So I read on, okay, so uh, uh, gospel artist Nathaniel Bass is a big Barcelona supporter. So I saw on his page the other day saying that it's like everybody can beat Barcelona now. (laughs) It's just beating them anyhow. Okay, uh, let's go on to more stories. Hakim, second place Inter Milan needed second half goals from Akraf Hakim and leading scorer Romelu Lukaku to overcome stubborn resistance from Spezia as they beat the Syrian newcomers. 2-1 2-1 on Sunday. Yes, um, and Inter Milan needs this result. They're, ju- they're chasing um, AC Milan back-to-back. Uh, they're just one point now behind AC Milan. Um, I-, I think three points ahead of Juventus. Um, so They're trying to keep that position. And each game for them is like the final. And you think, oh, it's special. it shouldn't be hard. It was a tough one for Inter Milan. Every game is really tough for Inter Milan. And, and that's where Inter Milan's problem is. With all the players that they have, with all the buys that they got, um, they still have to struggle. There's no easy game for Inter Milan. That's their biggest problem. For Juventus, you'll see some games that they will struggle and there's some games that they'll win easily. Same thing with AC Milan, but Inter Milan never has that. So it seems they're going to have to, if they're going to win the Scudetto, they're going to fight with every single piece of drop of sweat mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to, to get points. Um, Juventus won their game, AC Milan won their game, Inter Milan won their game. So those three at the top are still winning games um, the same way they should. The, on the other hand, for Napoli, the struggle is real. They lost Insigne and um, Mertens, well, Insigne to suspension, Mertens to injury, and they co- look like a completely different team um, against Lazio. No bite, no bark. Uh, so they'll be praying for one of those to come back so that they can get back into into their winning ways. But now, for now, in entire Syria, AC Milan is doing the job they need to do. They're, 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 yeah. they're doing the lost it, work. They're determined <laughs> to win, to take this. Somebody, somebody wants to take this title from Juventus. Mm. And it, it's one of the Milan sides that are struggling to stop them. It's how they finish, though, because you can have a beautiful first half of season and have a horrible second half. Right. If you think I'm lying. And the same way reverse. So as yes. fans, I still hope you can have a really terrible yeah. beginning of season. And then if the you think I'm lying, year. ask Roma. Roma, first half against Atalanta, 1-0. Roma, full time against Atalanta, 4-1. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Okay, all right, let's end with some comments here. Uh, we have from, I think it was Chimo, well, I've had Chimo Visa go on to, oh gosh, please put your name. Uh, Casey Michael from Apapa says, any team or coach that has issues with Ozil will always stutter. Ask the German coach Joachim Lowe and uh, Ateta. So I said, that's right. Then Mrs. A sends one cheeky message. I can't even, and one picture for all Arsenal fans. Crew says, Ayo, go back to Arsenal Lowe. Since you left, it's been horrible. Arsenal is learning how to play football as a club side again. Tega, please don't compare Arsenal with Sheffield. At least Sheffield know where they are and aren't confused about it. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you so much. We dedicate today's show to all Arsenal fans out there because you need a, a, a burst of sunshine in your lives. You know, some good news, something to laugh about. I uh, thank you all so much for being a part of the show. Don't forget to join Tega on Twitter at Tega Supreme. Uh, find me at Ayomaira SA and, of course, jointly at Smooth981FM. Use the hashtag locker room 981 so guys i have some free gifts i'm going to be giving out i'm going to be your santa claus today from nine o'clock during lagos talks 981 i have free tickets to go see oluru Mbi, the musical by bolanle austin peters production what's more we have another get we have another surprise well not a surprise because on social media but johnny drill is going to be joining me for a lagos talks 91 special all through this week we're going to be having different guests join us on the show we're going to chat to them and very importantly open the phone lines to have their fans call in and ask them any question at all in the world it is going to be fun and christmassy here on smooth 98.1 smooth breakfast stay tuned are you people serious where's my own gifts eh? christmas gifts let me give you birthday gifts first <laughs> Yeah, I'm real worried, guys. <laughs> 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 